using GPT-4 to document your code, rename your steps to something more meaningful, convert them to camel case, all in one click. This is just amazing. Let's go. Here I've got some code, okay? It's basically cleaning up some data, filtering some rows, capitalizing, trimming text, merging columns, you know, your standard Power Query stuff, which is awesome. But I just want to document this and also remove all the spaces and give these more meaningful names. Now that's time consuming until now. Okay, check this out. I am going to open up my GPT session, my OpenAI session. I'm actually going to use GPT-4 because I find this doesn't work that well with 3.5. Stay tuned if you want me to show you how to, to sign up for this. It is 20 bucks a month, but it's the best 20 bucks you'll ever spend, okay? Check this out. I'm actually going to go and paste in a prompt that I've already built. And again, I will show you this at the end. Let me just go and copy this prompt. And this is the art, okay, of GPT. It's the prompting. So I've pasted this in. Again, if you stay tuned, I'll show you what this does in a second. But I've essentially given it a whole bunch of instructions about how I'd like my code to be laid out. And all I'm going to do is go to the Advanced Editor, Control A to select all, Control C to copy it. Okay, go back into my Power Query code, into ChatGPT, paste the code, click the button, and off it goes. Okay, sure, here's the cleaned up code. It gives me a description of what the overall code is doing. It gives me line by line comments. It puts the word filter underscore to really flag those filtered steps. It provides more useful um, codes like trim first name, capitalize first name, merge name columns. All this sort of stuff is just so good. I just love this. This is brilliant, okay? And it, asks, and it just tells me everything it does. Okay, so what I can do then, I can simply go back up here, copy the code. All right, go back into my advanced editor, control V. Okay, let me just paste over the top. So nicely commented code, click done. I've got exactly the same answer. And my steps are nicely there with little descriptions about everything it's doing. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, I'm using this all the time now. It is just so good. So how do you do, uh, how do you set up your OpenAI account? You go to openai.com, chat GPT, okay, where you can actually sign up. You know, you can sign up here, get yourself an account. GPT 3.5 is free, but honestly, it just doesn't work anywhere near as good as GPT um, 4. So you really need to pay that 20 US dollars a month. But honestly, you know, all that coding, that's that's half an hour every time or whatever. You know, it's just insane. So sign up here, paste your code in. All right, let's have a look at the prompt that I've got. Okay, what's the, what's the prompt? So this is the key with GPT. It is getting the prompt right. So here's my prompt. You need to tell it to act as a certain expert. All right, it needs to know what sort of realm to focus on. So act as a Power Query expert. It's important that you add a summary. Okay, I've just given it some overview, some instructions. This code will be available via the link in the chat. Okay, so you can just copy this code. Um, give it examples. Okay, so add a summary after the let statement like this. Give it those sorts of instructions. That makes a huge difference. So there we go. Always add this line as a comment. Rename each line of M code to something more meaningful and use camel case. So give it examples. Okay, and I've given it some exceptions, but give it examples. You'll get much better results with examples. If a step name contains any filtering, then prefix the step name with filter underscore. I like to flag filtered steps. It makes it more obvious to you when you look at your code that some filtering's gone on. And I've even asked it to evaluate the code. Plus, it is important to work out and ensure we get 
the same result. You need to tell it this. Humans would understand that implicitly, but you have to tell it. You can also tell it to keep things as simple as possible. Again, things we take for granted, but the, the sort of the large language models don't. Really, really useful stuff, okay? And then you just use that code, paste this in whenever you need it. It is absolutely insane. All right, are you using this stuff? Do you think it's useful? I'll do some more of these examples if you like this sort of stuff for DAX, for other Excel tools, functionality. I'm just blown away. I love this stuff. It is amazing. Okay, let me know what you think. I'll catch you in the next video.